All right, so first of all, um, our final quiz was canceled on Friday because of the whatever we had. Um, let's let's reschedule that one because we haven't had very many, and that's the last one that's scheduled. Um, but I, I need to look at things and figure out the best spot to put it. Um, so we'll reschedule. Quiz six. Um, I just need to, I just need to look at the schedule of everything and figure out a good time. But I'll give you at least like a full, you know, like two days or whatever to, um, of heads up. Uh, so I'll put the date in the D2L announcements. Um, and, uh, I had a question about linkages number eight. It looks like this, um. There's a member this way. It's symmetric. The angles are all the same. The lengths are all the same. Uh, this one connects to the ground by a pin joint. Uh, this one connects to the ground by a pin that can slide in a slot. Um, the angles are 40 degrees. There's a 500 Newton force applied to the pin here. Masses are both 20 kilograms. Um, the lengths are both one and a half meters. And it doesn't say anything about the motion at that instant, so um, it's preferable for me to say if they're not moving, but uh, I'm going to assume that there's no angular velocity at those points. You could also put it in as a variable, but then you can see how it relates to that. Um, so I'm going to call, uh, member one, the one that's connected to the pin joint and member two, the other one. And so a free body diagram, uh, before I do that, let's just go through all the steps, the rigid body steps for, um, member one. Um, it has a fixed point, and so if I I'll label this joint A, this one B, this one C, um, and the about point is that joint A. The moment of inertia is one twelfth uh, times the mass, 20 kilograms, times the length squared, plus the mass times the distance squared uh, from the center of mass of one to the about point. So that's 0.75 squared. And what do you get for that?
and now free body diagram. We have an unknown force here at the pin. I'll call that RA. We have the weight of 196.2 at the midpoint. We also have a reaction force with member two. Uh, that's the force on one by two. And then if you assume that the pin is part of the lower numbered member, you also have a downward force 500 newtons at that same point. Um, the vector from, well, so let's see. Our about point is A. And we're just going to go through all these forces. So I'll start with RA. The row vector is zero. Force vector is RAX, RAY. Cross product is zero. And then all the other three forces are going to have the same row vector because they're at the same point. Um, F12, that row vector is, and that's going to be. 0.75 times cosine and sine of 40. What's that? Okay. Okay. And then the force vector is F12x, F12y. Cross product is 0.5745 F12y minus 0.4821 F12X. And then the weight force, same row vector. Uh, the weight is zero, negative 196.2. So what's 0.5745 times 196.2? And then the last one is that 500 Newton force. Same row vector. The force is zero, negative 500. And so that is negative two, two, eight, seven. Okay. And that's everything. Um, do we need Newton's second law? And so we get negative 0.4821F12X plus 0.5745F12Y uh, is equal to, you know, the positives of these added together. So what do you get for those? Ooh, it's like almost exactly 400. Uh, two, 391.5. What about what? Oh. Stupid statics messing up my brain. Okay, thank you. So it's all this added together is equal to I alpha equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, this is a really boring dynamics problem. 
so minus uh, 15 plus 15 alpha one is equal to 399.97. And that's our first equation. Uh, variables, we have three. Um, that's the vector F1, 2, and alpha 1. Now we'll go on to member two. Oh, wait on the free body diagram. Um, so that is this one. Does that have a fixed point? No. So the about point is the center of mass. Um, and so that's the point C. Um, so the mass moment of inertia about C is 1 12th times the mass times the length squared. What do you get for that? 0.75 kilogram meter squared. Um, and then free body diagram. Uh, there's a weight force of 196.2. Their contact force with member one. So that's F on two by one or negative F one two. There's no 500 Newton force there because that's applied to member one. It's applied to the pin. And then at the pin and slot joint, there's just a vertical force. Um, I'll call that was that the joint D, I think? So I'll just call that RB pointing up. Um, now the row vectors are going to come from the center of mass to wherever the force is. So I'll start with this force at negative F12, vector 0. Force vector is negative F12x, negative F12y. Cross product is 0. Uh, then the weight force, row vector is 0. Force is zero, negative 196.2, cross product is zero, and then the force RB, uh, that is 0.75 times negative cosine of 40. Five, seven, four, five. And then, uh, yes. So this is the vector going from the center of mass to where the force is applied. So that's positive x and then a negative 0.4821. And the force vector is 0 positive rb. And so 0.5748RB. Anyone have any questions about that? The change in the, how you calculate the row vector or anything like that? I think probably most people would agree by now that it's like 
the mistakes you make are almost never like it's not really about like understanding as much as just like all these little places where you can make dumb mistakes like i already made one earlier and it's really easy to do okay so uh do we need newton's second law yes um so negative f12 x negative f12 y uh, plus zero R B plus zero negative one ninety six point two is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. Um, I'm going to call that a two x and a two y. That's the acceleration of the center of mass, and then uh, the moment equation says 0 0.5748 RB is equal to 3. Point, what was it, 3.75? 3.75, the mass moment of inertia, times the angular acceleration of body two. And those are equations two, three, and four. So the first one says negative F12 X minus 20 A2 X is equal to zero. Third one says negative F12Y plus RB minus 20A2Y is equal to 196.2. And the third, the fourth equation in our system says 0.5748RB minus 3.75 alpha 2 is equal to zero. So that's equation two star, three star, and four star. Um, variables. We have F12, alpha one, RB. the vector A2 and the angular acceleration alpha 2. So that's 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 4 equations, 7 variables. And that means we need three constraint equations. Um, so if you go back and look at the original problem, um, you don't need a constraint here because that's a fixed point. And that's why if you look back through our variables, uh, the reaction force of this pin doesn't appear as one of our variables. Um, if you wanted to calculate that later, you'd have to go back after you're done with all this and use Newton's second law for that first body. Um, there's a there's a pin joint here, and those the points here on body one and body two are locked together. So the acceleration at C according to body one is equal to the acceleration at C according to body two. How many equations is that going to give us? Two. It's a 2D. You did this sneaky thing though, where you sort of hid one yeah, finger behind. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, it's a two-dimensional problem, so there's two components of the acceleration, and so we're going to get two equations from that. And then we'll go down to this one, and 
This one, the acceleration isn't fixed. This can slide along that slot. Um, and so what we're going to do is come up with an expression for the acceleration of B, and then we're going to say the Y component of that acceleration is zero. It can't move up and down. It can only move side to side. Yep. Could you also use alpha one equals negative alpha two to this one? Alpha one is equal to negative alpha two as a constraint. You are right that those have to be the same. Um, that would... So that would give you There is a way to do it that way, but it's not totally clear to me how that would work um, because that would, so basically like you would cut down the number of variables you have by one. You know, you could think of it that way. And so now we have, um, I think maybe, yeah, I'm not sure where you would use that. You could do it that way. I I think it's easier to, it's more like sort of consistent to just think about those joint constraints. But yeah, you could use something like that. But uh, then we'd have a, like I'm not exactly sure what constraint that would replace. You know what I mean? Oh. And we'd have a system of uh, six variables and four equations at that point. And you'd have to find two more constraint equations that weren't linear multiples of the constraint you already have. Um, it, it, there's probably a simple answer to it, but it doesn't occur to me right away. Yep. Okay. Yes. So anytime we have, we're going to have a lot of these problems where um, as the thing moves, it stays an isosceles triangle. The two angles stay the same and the two lengths stay the same. And if it stays an isosceles triangle, then at every instant, you know, those angles have to be the same. And so the rate at which those angles are changing has to be the same. And the rate at which those rates has to be the same. So, um, so at any instant, those have to be equal and opposite. And the angular accelerations have to be equal and opposite. So just look for isosceles triangles. And if they stay isosceles through the whole motion because of the way the joints are set up, then you're always going to have that. Okay, so first let's do the constraint at C. Um, so I'll start with member one. The acceleration at that point C, uh, member one has a fixed point. So all we're talking about is a circular motion around A. And so this is just equal to alpha cross R plus omega cross quantity omega cross R. These are zero. Um, alpha is zero, zero, alpha one. R is the vector that goes from that fixed point to C. So that's uh, point five seven, what was it? Five seven four five. And then point four eight. Two one zero. Um, and so you get negative point four eight two one alpha one for the x component. For the y component, you get positive point five seven four five alpha one, and then zero for z. And then member two doesn't have a fixed point, so you have to use relative motion. 
the acceleration at C relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration at C relative to the center of mass of two plus the acceleration of the center of mass of two relative to the ground. Um, this is the one that we've already named A2. And this one is circular motion. And so the acceleration at C is equal to zero, zero, alpha two. crossed with, okay, so what's the R vector here? So, um, we're using relative motion, um, so we're saying we know, we have an expression already, a variable expression for the acceleration at the center of mass, um, and then our circular motion goes from the center of mass to the point of interest. Okay, well, this is a case where the point of interest is the center of mass, so that our vector in this case is just equal to zero. I guess if you would have just, if I would have just looked at it at first and said that's the center of mass of two, we could have skipped the whole circular motion thing, but this R vector in this case is zero, zero. And we're adding that to um, A2x, A2y. And so the acceleration at C, according to member two, is just equal to A2x, A2y, zero. And now we'll set these two equal to each other. And uh, we get, so for the constraint, negative 0.4821 alpha 1 is equal to A2x, or in other words, minus A2x is equal to 0. And then the y equation says positive 0.5745 alpha 1 minus a2y is equal to 0. And those are equations 5 star and 6 star. If you don't want to solve this as a big, you know, reduced row echelon form thing, you could also just think of these as substitutions you could make, and now you're reducing the number of variables. And then, uh, so we need one more equation, and that's going to come from the constraint at B. And so the idea of this constraint is that the acceleration of that point B can't have any Y component because of the orientation of that slot. And so we'll just come up with an expression for the acceleration of B, and then we'll just set the Y component equal to zero and leave the X component alone. Um, so how are we gonna acceler express the acceleration at the point B? Um, so the acceleration at B relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration at B relative to the center of mass of two plus the acceleration of the center of mass of two relative to the ground. This is A2. This is circular motion.
and we don't have any angular velocities. So the acceleration at B is equal to zero, zero, alpha two. Crossed with our vector that goes from C to B. Uh, so that's positive. 0.5745, negative 0 0.48210, and then plus A2x, A2y, 0. And you get um, 0.4821 alpha 2, plus A2X, and then you get 0.5745 alpha 2 plus A2Y, and then zero for Z. And so our last equation just says our expression for the Y component of that acceleration is equal to zero. So 0.5745 alpha 2 plus A2Y is equal to zero. And that's equation seven star. So now we have seven equations for seven variables. Um, Let's get a number for this. Okay, so to solve this as a matrix, we need seven rows and eight columns. The columns are the variables, so I'll call those um, F12X, F12Y, alpha 1, RB, A2X, A2Y, alpha 2, and then the constant. And then the rows are the seven equations. Um, so could someone just start with equation one and go through and read me what variable is coming and then read me the coefficient and then it's a pretty quick way to go through this. So like equation one would be F12X negative 0.4821. And then what comes after that in equation one? For which one? You want to go to No, just tell me tell me what variable you're gonna give me a number for and then tell me what the number is. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. For the constant? No, I'm just going to read it as you like. Oh, minus, I see. Okay. 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 And then A2X is minus 20. Minus 20? Yeah. Okay. And then minus one for F one two Y. Yep, and then minus two for F one two Y. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Zero. Oh. 196. Then for our RB is point 0.2. Yep. Okay. 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 Alpha 1 is negative 0. 0.4. All right. And no constant. Okay. Okay. Zero. A two Y is one and zero. And a couple of people plug that in and solve it and we'll keep doing it until two people get the same things. Okay, F one two. All right. Okay. That's, and next is alpha one. And then what's next, RB? Uh, yeah, okay. 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 So, um, you know, you were asking about, uh, Tim, you were asking about could we use that constraint on those angular accelerations? The answer is yes, but it doesn't appear to be all that good. Um, I, I like to just do it this way, and then you have this check at the end on problems like that. You know that they have to come out to be you know, an optimal. That's the answer I got using that exact constraint. Yeah. Well, nice. I mean, so what did you use as your second constraint? Oh, I used a constraint at C. At C. Okay. And then instead of so, using and you replaced that instead of using a constraint okay. at B, I Great. Yeah. And the other answers all match too, or? Uh, I don't know. Seems like a good sign. Okay, nice. Okay, so, um, and then, like, if this was, <laughs> you wanted to use this, this was your uh, patent application that for, like, the green slicers, like, you didn't want to run the acceleration of this plane over there. Um, so then you would, then you'd have to use relative motion and circular motion to calculate the acceleration of that point. But when you calculated it, you better get, a y component that's equal to zero or something went wrong with your constraint. And if you were doing this to figure out um, how strong the pin at this support had to be, um, well, that reaction force didn't appear in our equations uh, because it's a fixed point. And so now you'd have to go back and use Newton's second law with what you know about that first member. Um, you'd use circular motion to calculate. Let's do that, actually. That, that should take just about the right amount of time. Um, so now after the fact, you're like, hey, what's that reaction force RA? 
Um, well, you know that Newton's second law says uh, some of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. So, um, first you have to calculate the acceleration of the center of mass. Well, in this problem, we already know what it is because the accelerations of the two bodies happen to be the same thing, you know? But in general, the acceleration of that point C would be equal to um, zero, zero, alpha one, crossed with 0 0.5745, 0 0.48210. So that's zero, zero, negative 17.09 crossed with this. Let me just do that in my head real quick. Um, that should come out to be, I'd say like rounding a little, it comes out to 8.24. Uh, negative 9.82. I'm pretty good at that. And then, uh, now we can go all the way back. You know, we already have the free body diagram. So, R plus F12 plus, you know, all these things. So, RA plus F12 plus zero, negative 196.2 plus zero, negative 500 is equal to 20 times 8.24, negative 9.82. And um, so RAX, RAY, plus what we calculated for F12, uh, negative 164.78, positive 111.71, plus zero, negative 196.8, Two plus zero, negative five hundred is equal to twenty times eight point two four, negative nine point eight two Can someone tell me what you get for those? Who do you get zero for X? Oh, it's two of those, not, they don't cancel. Okay, 320, 329.58 for X. Seven eighty point eight nine. What is it? The right pin. Okay, yeah. So, um, 
the acceleration at B. Um, relative to the ground is the acceleration at B relative to the center of mass of 2 plus the acceleration of the center of mass of 2 relative to the ground. So that's 0, 0, uh, positive 17.09 times you know, cross product with the R vector. Um, so that's 0.5745, uh, negative 0.4821. But uh, acceleration of the center of mass of 2 is this, 8.24, negative 9.82. And if we don't get zero for y, we have to do this whole problem over again. Yeah, I, you know, there's round off error, and we've been truncating stuff the whole time. So, what do you get for the two components? Yeah, or the whole thing. Yeah. I is zero. That's good. Z is zero. Does that come out to be zero for X? No. Okay. Are they both positive? Oh yeah, for X. So, uh, sorry, what is that? 16.48. meters per second squared. How many people still have linkage problems to do? Those can, yeah, let's just do a, so I guess I'll, I'll put the stuff on from two weeks ago and stuff, but other than that, we'll just have like a catch up day. And then uh, on Wednesday, I guess we'll go on to, uh, kinematics of particles in rotating coordinate systems.